Three strangers are about to battle this majestic golden wall. It's worth a tantalising £20,000. Can they work as a team and leave with the cash, or will the wall come tumbling down? Decimate. This is Decimate. Decimate. Oh, thank you very much, and welcome to Decimate. Let's meet this beautiful team hoping to win big money today. I'm Carol, a high school teacher from the Isle of Man. I'm Chloe, a PhD zoology student from Cheshire. I'm Al Kamal, an IT administrator from London. Oh, what a lovely looking team we have. Welcome to the show, guys. Al Kamal, how are you, my friend? I'm good, I'm good. So, IT support? Yeah. Yeah, you think you're it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gag. <laughs> it's a good one. And I heard you're a bit of a traveller as well, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'll try to, you know, try and visit a few countries here and there. And what would you do with a share of £20,000? Oh, it might have to be round the world trip, something like that. Oh, fingers Holidays. crossed. Let's hope you're doing wife. it, mate. Welcome to the show. Chloe, so PhD zoology student. Yeah, that's me. And what are you studying then? Uh, I study fruit flies. What? Yeah, it sounds, fruit flies? sounds so... really boring, but they're What's actually so good very about fruit flies? Really? If you had to sell me <laughs> fruit flies, sell it to me now. OK, they're the basis for every scientific study we've ever learnt about. There you go. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you like doing in your spare time? Um, I really enjoy keeping fit and I'm a keen kickboxer. OK, well, if you were to win a few quid today, what would you do with it? Well, my family live in Australia, so I'd oh, okay. pay for a flight over there to go yeah. and stay with them. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks Thank for you. being here, my love. <laughs> Carol, what do you teach? Uh, English and media studies. OK, lovely. And what ages do you teach? 11 to 18-year-olds. Lovely. What would you do with a share of £20,000, Carol? Um, well, I'd like to go to Sweden. Okay. Um, I've never seen the Northern Lights. I'd love to see the Northern Lights and to sing karaoke at the ABBA Museum as well. Would you really? Would I, yes. Oh, well, fingers Love crossed. It. Well, listen, thanks to each and every one of you being on the show this afternoon. We're going to have lots of fun. And I've got a feeling we're going to be lucky, all right? OK. Carol, Chloe, Al Kamel, here's how the show works. Right here is our golden wall, and it's worth £20,000. It's divided into ten columns, worth £2,000 each. Now, one at a time, you're going to step forward to face ten questions. That's one per column. You get a question right, that column is protected and it will light up beautifully. Better than the Northern Lights, Carol. Wait till you see this. <laughs> Look at that! You get that right, the money will stay in the game. But get a question wrong, and sadly, this is what happens. Decimate. Yes. The column is wiped out and that cash will be lost for good. So the idea, guys, is to protect as much money as you can. Because once all three of you have played, that is going to be what is at stake in our end game. So, team, we ready to play? Right. Before we do, though, we need to choose one player who's going to step forward in round one. But to help you decide, I'm going to reveal some key words. And these are going to appear in the first round of ten questions. So here are your key words. Emma Hamilton, US Constitution, Daltonism, Alf, Rod Harrington, Tony Awards, Torve Janssen, Son Nazir, Heart Transplant and Young Ones. So, who's going to step forward and face the golden wall first? You guys decide between you. I'm not confident. I'm not confident oh, that's a good start. Chloe, <laughs> straight away, kickboxer. I'm not confident. I'll, I'll go first. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah I'll go first. Okay. Carol, before you step forward, Chloe and Al Kamal, we're going to give you 20 seconds, give as much information to Carol as possible about these key words. You ready? 20 mm -hmm. seconds, don't let her down. Go. Okay, yeah, young ones, Cliff Richard and the young ones. Yeah, there's also young ones. Summer holiday. Uh, the, the comedy sort of show yeah. had Rick Mail in it. Um, Who else was Tony Rick Mail's musicals? Aid Edmondson. Aid Edmondson, was it? Yeah, what was the Nigel? Oh, I don't know the other one. Okay, yeah. what about um, oh, Daltonism? I have no idea what that is. I'm not sure either. Right, team, your time is up. How'd you find that, Carol? Mm. <laughs> okay. Not sure. I'll answer later. Well, we're going to find out as I ask you to step forward and face the golden wall. Okay. Carol, you're first up. The whole of the Isle of Man is going to be watching right now. Okay, I hope but, not. But listen, you're not completely on your own, all right, my love? No. Because if there's an answer you're not sure about, you can pass back the question to your teammates. And if they think you've given a wrong answer, they can buzz in to overrule and change your answer. 
But you only have five overalls and five passbacks between all three of you over your whole show. So good luck. You ready to play, Carol? I am, yes. Right, here we go. Here comes your first question to protect £2,000 in column number one. Lady Emma Hamilton was the mistress of which British military hero? Was it Montgomery, Nelson or Wellington? Right. She's a teacher, she's a teacher, she's got this. I have got this, actually. Have you? I am really interested in naval history. Oh, thank you. And I know it's Nelson. You know it's Nelson? Yeah. To light up column number one, we're going to lock in Nelson. If that's right, we're protecting £2,000. Great start to the game. Is Carol right? Is the correct answer Nelson? Great start to the game. Yes. Right, here we are. See, we're up yeah, and running. I've got one, that's okay. That's it. <laughs> right, to protect column number two and another £2,000. Okay. Here comes your next question. Which amendment to the US Constitution offers protection from self incrimination? Is it third? The fifth or the first? Right. Um, I had a misspent youth watching an awful lot of American movies. Did you really? And I spent so long watching courtroom dramas. I thought he was going to say Rocky. And people say, I plead the fifth. So it, that's the Fifth Amendment. So I, I th I'm going for the fifth. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. OK, we're going to lock sure in that. the Fifth Amendment. The team haven't overruled you. The counting on you, Carol. Is the Fifth the correct answer to light up column number two. Yes! <laughs> OK, oh. great start to the game. Still got five passbacks and five overalls. OK. Question number three. Which condition is sometimes known as Daltonism after John Dalton, who suffered from it and researched it? Is it diabetes, cerebral palsy or colour blindness? Oh, do you know, I was worried about that, but... I love when you say but. But, yeah, you sound I, I, now. I've got a memory of um, being checked out for colour blindness sometime in the school, some guy came in. Right. And I'm pretty sure that was a Dalton test. So I'm going to go for colour blindness. Yeah? Yeah. We're going to lock in colour blindness. Yeah. To lie up. Column number three to protect another £2,000. Three in a row. Colour blindness. <gasps> Come on, Joe. Whoa. Man, a great game. <laughs> well done. All the kids at school now shouting, Come on, miss. Come oh, on, miss. I hope so. Right. Question number four to protect another £2,000. We still have five passbacks and five overalls in play. Which female British singer is known by the nickname Alf? and also released an album with that name. Is it Annie Lennox, Alison Moyet, or Lily Allen? Uh, now, this is right in my ear of the 80s. Oh, really? <laughs> I think it's Alison Moyet. I'm pretty sure it's Alison Moyet. You think Moyet. it's Alison Moyet? Right. So we're going to lock in Alison Moyet. Yeah. This is a great start to the game if this is right. Alison Moyet to protect another £2,000 in column number four. Yes! Yeah. Look at that, we've used no passbacks, no overalls, and we're coming up to the halfway mark. Question number five. Rod Harrington is a commentator and former professional player of which sport? Is it darts, golf, or rugby league? What do you like on sports, Carol? Absolutely rubbish. Okay. Um, I haven't a clue. Um, I'm going to have to pass it back. Yeah, I'm going to pass yeah. back. OK. Guys, yeah. you need your help. Yeah, we were leaning towards darts, I think, yeah. from the name. Um, I've never heard of him in rugby league, yeah. but I don't watch much sport, to be honest. We're not 100%, but we'll go for darts. OK. We're locking in darts. If it's right, I'm going to light up column number five and protect another £2,000. Rod Harrington, is he a former professional player of darts? Yes, he is! <laughs> wow, what a well done. well done. Look at this! Well, that was a oh, oh. well done. This is turning into be a real exciting, great game. Four passbacks, five overalls still in the game. Question number six, £20,000 still on the wall. Which British actor was the host of the 2016 Tony Awards in New York? Was it Hugh Laurie, Damien Lewis, James Corden. 
Mm. That's another one I had no clue, but then when I saw the name James Corden, that rings a bell with me. I don't know why, but that rings a bell. Um, and I think somewhere I've read that he was, you know, he was in some sort of theatrical production there, so that figures as well. I'm going to go for James Corden and yep. hope that they will overrule, overrule you if you me think if wrong. they think I'm wrong. But okay. I'll go for James We're Corden. We're going to lock in James Corden. Yeah. They're not overruling, Carol. <gasps> So no maybe pressure. they don't know, or maybe they think you're right. To light up column number six to protect another £2,000, is it the right answer? Yes, it oh. is! <laughs> right, look at this. This is looking good. <laughs> Question number seven, to protect another £2,000. The writer and illustrator, Tove Janssen, is most famous for creating which characters? Is it... The Moomins, the Smurfs, or the Wombles? See, I don't think it's the Wombles. I don't know who created them, but I don't think it's Toby Janssen. But I could be wrong. I, re I really don't know. For some reason, I'm thinking the Moomins. I'm not just not sure, but I'll go for the Moomins. OK, we're locking in the Moomins. This is right. We've still got £20,000 on the oh. wall. To light up column number seven to protect another two thousand pounds, the Moomins. Is it the correct answer? Yes, it is. Oh my word! <laughs> wow! wow. <laughs> so look at this. Wow! We are only three columns away from completing the golden wall. Question number eight. The French port of Saint Nazaire lies at the mouth of which river? Is it the Doigne? Rhone or Loire? What's your geography like? It's not too bad, but not France. Um, I don't know where Saint Nazaire is. It sounds southern. Um, I'll go for Loire, Loire and hope that they will overrule, overrule me if, if okay. I'm wrong. We're locking in Loire to light up column number eight. Carol says Loire. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Yes! Oh, my word! <laughs> wow. We are this only two crazy. questions away. This is crazy. It's, crazy. it's a great game. Here comes question number nine. In which hospital was the UK's first successful heart transplant operation performed in 1979? Was it Patworth, Addenbrooke's, or Harefield? Patworth. <sighs> That rings a bell as being, a, you know, a hospital that deals with, with heart problems. Addenbrooke's, Harefield, I don't know. I'll say Papworth, but please, you know, overrule me if you think I'm wrong. OK. Carol might be relying on her team now. Has her luck run out? We're locking it in. There's no overall from your teammates. To light up column number nine. Was Papworth the hospital that gave us the first successful heart transplant back in 1979? I can't look. Yes! Oh, oh, oh. Wow! Wow. Well, we get this right. It's a clean sweep to bring £20,000 in to round two with four passbacks and five overalls still in play. Carol, here comes your last and final question. Okay. In a famous episode, who did the young ones compete against on University Challenge? Was it Footlights College, Oldies College, or the Tofts College? It's not something I ever really watched. I remember the, them being on University mm. Challenge, but I don't know. They were all a bit scuzzy, weren't they? So they probably would have gone up against the Tofts. So I'll go for Tofts and hope that they will overrule me if they know better, and hopefully okay. they do. We're locking in Tofts College. The trust in your instincts, I think, here, Carol. <sighs> Column number 10. Please go golden. Decimates. Oh, no! Oh, no! <sighs> the answer we were looking for was, in fact, it oh, was nice. Footlights, but you've had a fantastic round. Oh. Give a big round of applause. Well done, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Go and join your teammates. Go on.
There we go. Now, listen, let me tell you now, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We only lost one column. You guys, you've got something to live up to. She has raised the bar. Yeah. OK? We have £18,000 still in the game. We're going to take that and spread it evenly across ten new columns, and it's going to look like this. Look at that. Hardly any difference. You wouldn't even notice, would you, really? <laughs> right. That's 18,000 on the wall. Each column is now worth 1,800 pounds. So, now it's down to Chloe and Alkama, who's going to play next. But before we decide, let's look at your keywords. Here they are. Tortoise, David Cornwall, Pig Track, Gareth Bale, Sir Arthur Evans, Lance Corporal Jones, Nick Leeson, Borglum, Bananarama, European Union. So, between Chloe and Alkama, who thinks best play to come and step forward and face the wall? Don't mind going forward. I think you probably know more than me, so you go for it. Okay, are you yeah. sure? Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, then. Who's going for it? Take a risk. Right, Alkama, <laughs> you'll just hold on there, pal. Okay, but it's down to Chloe and Carol to give you as much information regarding these keywords as possible. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Don't let him down. Time starts now. Right, okay. uh, David Cornwall is uh, John Le Carre, the, the spy novelist. Okay. Tortoises, right. what, what um, continent are they that, from? Uh, a Mediterranean. Any banana rama songs? I know yeah. they're from North America. What's the America famous banana rama song? Oh, Gareth Bale, Bale plays for Wales. Uh, um, recently... Robert De Niro's Waiting. Okay. Most right. expensive footballer, I think. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Played for Wales. Right, I'm afraid your time is up. Oh, there was a lot of information coming your way then, Alcamo. Did yeah. that help? Yeah, a bit. I think it did, yeah. Oh, well, let's, we're going to find out as I should step forward and face the golden wall. <laughs> now, I don't need to remind you, Alcamo, yeah. what a great round Carol had. She has left you there with £18,000, four passbacks and five overalls. OK? Now, first column is worth £1,800. Here comes your first question, my friend. Okay. What name was given to the last male Pinter Island tortoise who died in 2012? Was it Doubting Thomas, Simple Simon, or Lonesome George? First thought, that looks quite tricky. I didn't think I knew. Lonesome George just jumps at me. Yeah, I think I'd go for Lonesome George. Yeah? Just because he died as a last male. OK, we're locking in Lonesome George to protect column number one and start your journey across the wall. Lonesome George, is it the correct answer? Yeah, well done, Alcamo. Good start to the game. Yeah. Right, here we go, question number two. British author David Cornwall writes under which pseudonym is it? John Le Carrier, Michael Frayne or Robert Harris? OK, so I didn't know, but... In that briefing, Carol told me which one it was, so I'm going to go for John Le Carre. Yeah? Yeah. OK. So we're locking in John Le Carre. If this is right, column number two will light up beautifully. But is it right? Yes, well played. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Right, let's see if we can get three in a row. Question number three. The pig track and the Watkin path are roots on which mountain? Is it Snowdon, Ben Nevis, or Scarfield Pike? This is a tricky one for me. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on this. Doesn't sound like a Scottish Watkin. I might need my teammates' help here, but I'll go for Scaffold Pike. OK, we're going to lock in Scarfield Pike. Oh, we've got an overall from your teammates. What are you thinking, guys? I'm pretty sure it's Snowden. I climbed it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I'll get you, love. <laughs> oh, sister. But it's going to be embarrassing if I'm wrong. Yeah, it will now. be embarrassing. You was up the wrong mountain, love, weren't you? <laughs> OK, we're changing the answer from Scarfield Pike to Snowden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to keep on this journey, to keep £18,000 on that wall. Were they right to overrule? Yeah, that's done. That's Chloe, that's on your face there, my love. So question number four to protect another £1,800. Here we go. Footballer Gareth Bale moved in 2013 from Spurs to which European club? Was it Juventus, Real Madrid or Bayern Munich? Yeah, I'm very sure about this one. Are you really? It's Real okay. Madrid. Real Madrid, we're locking it in. Let's light up column number four. Al Kamal, he says Real Madrid. Get in there, mate. <laughs> right, 
right, come on to the halfway mark. Let's keep this going. Question number five. Archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans led the excavation of which ancient site? Was it Troy, Carthage, or Knossos? I've heard of Troy and Carthage. Um, I'll go for... Um, yeah, I'm leaning more towards Troy. Yeah? Yeah. OK. We're going to lock in Troy. Oh, no, we're not. Carol. Go on. Knossos. Right, we're changing your answer from Troy to Knossos. They've used the overrule. We hope you're right, Carol. So do I. OK. Was Carol right to overrule Alcamel? <sighs> yes! Oh, yes! Come on! <laughs> Look at this! Now, here comes question number six. What is Lance Corporal Jones's day job in the sitcom Dad's Army? Is it Undertaker, Baker, or Butcher? Unfortunately, I was Dad's Army was on those TV series. I didn't go around to watch it. Did you not see the so... drama I did that was on Christmas about the making of Dad's Army? I heard of it. It was very good, well received. <laughs> but I didn't go around to it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I'm relying on my team a lot in this round, so I'll go for Baker, but once again, hopefully, either Carol or Chloe can help me out. OK. We're going to lock in Baker. No, we're not locking in Baker. <laughs> the girls have done it again. Carol, Chloe. I think it was the Clive Dunn character. OK. Who played a butcher. So we're changing the answer to butcher. <sighs> to light up. Column number six, to protect another 1,800 pounds. Were the ladies right to overrule you, my friend? <laughs> Whoa. We are only four questions away from bringing 18 grand into round three. Four passbacks, only two overrules. Here comes question number seven. Nick Leeson was convicted for his role in the collapse of which bank in 1995? Was it Lehman Brothers, BCCI, or Bearings? I'm quite sure about this one. Uh, there's even a film made about this with Ian McGregor, I think, playing Nick Leeson. It was Bearings, Bearings Bank. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. lock in Bearings Bank. Yeah. Okay, to protect column number seven, another 1,800 pounds. Is he right with bearings? Yes, he is. <laughs> right. Question number eight. Sculptor Gutzen Borglum is most closely associated with which giant public work? Is it Mount Rushmore Memorial, Sydney Opera House, or Christ the Redeemer? I've not heard of that name, to be honest, Gutzen. Borglum. Uh, because I'm not so sure, I'll probably use up one of my passbacks, yeah. Yeah? You're gonna pass it back? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, what do you reckon, ladies? We thought straight away it was yeah. Sydney Opera House, but we're, we're not certain, but should we lock that should in? That? Yeah. yeah? Sydney okay. Opera House, yeah. Okay, we've used the pass back. We're locking mm. in Sydney Opera House. Was he right to pass back? Yes, <laughs> Wow. Don't despair, though. We're still playing a great game. The answer we're looking for was, in fact, <laughs> Mount Rushmore Memorial. Listen, don't be disheartened, OK? We're now playing for 16,200. This is your penultimate question. We have three passbacks and two overalls in play. According to the title of the 1984 Bananarama song, which actor is waiting? Is it Clint Eastwood, Robert De Niro or Michael Caine? Yeah, I half knew this answer, but in the briefing, Carol said which, which actor it was, so that really helps, and now okay. I'm, I'm a lot more sure. Yeah. It's Robert De Niro. I think? Yeah. <laughs> right, we're locking in Robert De Niro. Let's light up column number nine. Robert De Niro, is he waiting? Yes, he is! <laughs> right, mate, it's your last and final question. Let's bring £16,200 into round three. Which country became the 28th member of the European Union in 2013? Was it 
Malta, Estonia, or Croatia? Ah, uh, for some reason I'm thinking Malta, because it's just a smaller sort of country, but oh, it's a tricky one. OK, I'll go for Malta, but if... if my of team... course, if they think you're wrong, yeah. they may overrule you. Are we going to go for Malta? Can I switch that to Estonia? Yeah, we've not locked <laughs> anything in yet. OK, I'll go for Estonia. OK, we're going to yeah. lock in Estonia. We've locked it in. I'd... What are you doing? You hop... Oh, girls! <laughs> oh, you were hovering then. Oh, You're not no, sure, are you? Press. So we thought it was Malta. Yeah. Really? I think Estonia's been in it for a while, but... Should we get Malta? You Malta, yeah. OK, okay Malta. we're changing oh. Al Kamal's answer from Estonia <laughs> to Malta to bring £16,200 in to round three. Only if they were right to overrule you, Al Kamal. Were they right? Death oh. it. Oh. No! Oh, man. Malta joined over a decade ago. The answer we were looking for was, in fact... Oh, well. Croatia. <laughs> oh, you've all been let off the hook. Give them a big round of applause. What a great oh, round. Well done, mate. Thanks to all your team. Great stuff. Well done, team. You've managed to keep £14,400 on the wall. But as before, we're going to take that and divvy it up into ten new columns. Hasn't changed that much. It's going to look like this. There it is. A lot of money. Each column is now worth £1,440. Chloe... Pressure's on, my love. You're last up. Now, remember, the more columns you can keep in play, the more cash we're going to take through to the end game. But as usual, your teammates are going to have 20 seconds to brief you on these next key words. Let's have a look at them. Lionel Richie's head. Celsius. Cape Verde. Road Naked. Bodega Bay. John Paul II. Horse's Face. Petticoat. Boris Johnson. Silver Medals. Right. Al Kamal Carroll, 20 seconds. Help Chloe out. Okay, so right, lunch is head of the Hello video. Hello, is it me you're yes, looking um, for? Um, Ooh, Celsius. Kate Verde is the southern. Yeah, uh, I thought so. Lady Godiva yeah. rode naked through Coventry. Yeah. How um, many is Celsius in the Fahrenheit? Um, uh, versa? Oh, oh, is it? 212. 212 to 100, yeah, I think. Yeah, 212 to 100. Uh, Boris Johnson was the former mayor of, of London. John Paul, John Paul II second Pope, was from Petty Poland. Right, Pope you lovely Mayor people. Martin. Time is up. Did they help you out there, Chloe? Oh, I think so. OK, we're going to find out as I should step forward and face the golden wall. <laughs> All right, how are you feeling, Chloe? Very scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> You're confident. You've got great two team members now. You've yeah. got three passbacks and only one overall. Mm -hmm. OK, the first question is worth £1,440. Mm -hmm. And here it is. Which Lionel Richie video features a blind student making a sculpture of Lionel Richie's head. Is it Hello, Truly, or Penny Lover? Ooh, so I think they've just mentioned that in the briefing. So, yeah, I'm leaning towards Hello, yeah. based on what they said in the briefing. OK, in the briefing. We're going to lock in Hello to protect £1,440. Question number two, column number two. At what temperature are the thermometer readings equal on both the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales? Is it zero, 32, or minus 40? Ooh, this is a tricky one. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not 32. Huh? 32 degrees C, that's about nearly 100 Fahrenheit, isn't it? So... Based on that, I'd go for zero. I'm just going to go zero. I'm going to risk yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, we're locking in zero. Oh, no, oh, no oh, we're not. <coughs> Carol, I'll come out. We're yeah. thinking it's minus, it's minus 40. 40. Minus 40? Yeah. yeah. So we're changing it from zero to minus 40 to light up column number two. Is it right? Yes, it is. Well played. Now, this is interesting. We have no more overalls, but we have three passbacks left. Mm -hmm. OK, to protect column number three and another £1,440. Here it is. What is the official language of Cape Verde? Is it Portuguese, French or Spanish? In the briefing, we said South Africa, but 
None of those fit with it being in South Africa, I don't think. I'm going to pass it back because yeah? I don't know. OK, yeah. we're passing it back to Carol and Al Kamal. Uh, I'm feeling it's Portuguese. Um, yeah? That's what I'd say, Portuguese. OK, teammates think it's Portuguese. We're going to lock in Portuguese. If this is right, we protect column number three. Portuguese. Yes. <laughs> Great pass back. Right. You only have two pass backs left yeah. now, Chloe. Column number four. Who reputedly rode naked through the city of Coventry? Was it Lady Godiva, Nell Gwynn, or Bodicea? Again, I think that was just mentioned in the briefing. So, um, I think I'm going to go for Lady Godiva. Yeah? I think she rode naked, had a kit off. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Right. We're going to lock in Lady Godiva. It's yeah. a light up column number four. Is she right? Yes, of course you are. <laughs> right, coming up to the halfway mark. Still playing for £14,400, team. Question number five. Which Alfred Hitchcock film is set in Bodega Bay? Is it Vertigo, The Birds or Psycho? Oh, this has not been a good round for me. Have you seen any of these films? I've seen The Birds. OK. Um, oh, no. I'm going to pass back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> OK. Carol, Al Kamal, what do you think? Before it came up, I thought it was the birds. We yeah? The birds yeah. Right. We're locking in the birds. Column number five. Yes! <laughs> now, we have one pass back okay. left. OK, to protect £14,400. Here comes question number six. Which city is served by John Paul II International Airport? Is it Krakow, Gdansk, or Warsaw? And Carol said he was from Poland. Now, which one of those is in Poland? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm either thinking of Krakow or Warsaw. I'm going to go for Warsaw. OK, we're going to lock in Warsaw. Is the correct answer Warsaw? Death in the Oh, I knew that was going to be wrong. The answer we're looking for is. Oh, back no. out. <laughs> OK, <laughs> listen, up there is now £12,960, OK? Mm -hmm. Still a lot of money. Right, Chloe, here comes question number seven. Here it is. What name is given to a wide white marking down the middle of a horse's face? Is it blaze, a coronet, or an ensign? I do not know the answer. I think I'm probably leaning more towards coronet, white marking, white blaze. Yeah, I don't know if that goes so well. I'm just going to go for coronet. Yeah? Yeah. Why not? Okay, <laughs> we're locking in coronet to protect twelve thousand nine hundred and sixty pounds on the wall. Is coronet the correct answer? No. <laughs> Death in it. No. <laughs> Carol, Alcamal, did you know this one? How did? Blaze. Is it blaze? Oh no, yeah. that's one I said oh. it wasn't. Yeah. Was Carol right? Yes, oh. she was. Right. Sorry, team. The wall is now worth a lot of money. £11,520. Here comes question number eight. What name is given to a stiffened petticoat used to give volume and shape to a long dress? Is it crinoline, raglan or gaiter? Um, unsurprisingly, I don't know the answer. I'm debating whether to use my pass back. No, I'm going to guess again. Yeah? Yeah, why not? I'm going to go for raglan. OK, we're locking in Raglan. We've not used the pass back. <laughs> this is right. We protect column number eight. Death in it. No! Did you guys know this one? Crinoline is a petticoat. <gasps> Crinoline is yeah. a petticoat. Is Carol right once again? Oh. Yes, she is. Not to worry. There's 10,080 pounds that we want to bring through to the end game. Mm -hmm. Question number nine. Yeah. <laughs>
Pity was the politician Boris Johnson born. Was it New York, London, or Paris? Oh, I think I know the answer to this one. Yeah? Yeah, because I remember having some conversations with some friends recently. So I think I'm going to go for New York. OK. You're going to lock in New York. Yeah, lock it in. Was Boris Johnson born in New York? I hope so. Yes! <laughs> right! Finally! Let's go out of flourish to bring £10,080 into our end game. You have one pass back left. Mm -hmm. Here comes your last and final question, Chloe. At the 1972 Olympics, the US team refused to accept silver medals in which sport? Was it basketball, rowing, or gymnastics? I don't think it's rowing. I know basketball is really big in the US but also so is gymnastics. Team suggests maybe more basketball than gymnastics. But because it's the last question and I have my pass back... Yes. <laughs> I'm going oh, to pass yeah, back. I thought you might. <laughs> Al Kamal, Carol, help out Chloe. Um, we're thinking gymnastics, mm. possibly due to some kind of scandal, doping scandal. Uh, in terms of doping, know. yeah, we'd probably go for... Yeah. OK, gymnastics. do you lock in gymnastics? If this is right, we're going into the end game with £10,080. To light up column number 10. Is it the right answer? Decimate. Oh, no! No, no! Oh, the answer we're looking for is... Basketball. Oh. Big, give Chloe a big round of applause. Well done, sweetheart. Don't join your team. Go on, darling. Don't join your team, mates. Well done. Hasn't this been a journey and a half, eh? Between you, you've managed to keep £8,640 on our golden wall. Now, it's the big moment. The chance to win that money. And here's how it works. We divide the cash once more into ten equal columns. We have a little reshuffle, and it looks like this. There we go. £8,640 right there on the wall. Now, to leave with that cash, you must work your way across the wall one last time, lighting up all ten columns. But now, you'll only have two minutes to do it. You'll get three chances to light up each column. But, of course, the more questions you need, the more time we're going to use up. Get all three questions wrong, and that column and the cash is lost. We rebuild the wall, and a teammate must take over from where you left off. Now, if as a team you fail to light up all ten columns, I'm afraid you're going to leave with nothing. So, before we decide who's going to play, here are the all-important ten key words. And they are Generation, Kerry, National Anthem, Candle, Chain, Victoria, Submarine, Trials, Easter and Van Gogh. Right, big decision, guys. Who's going to face the wall first? You've definitely been the best so yeah. far, Carol. I think so, too. I'll give it a go. Yeah. Sure. I'll right. give it a go. Carol? We believe in you. The responsibility has fallen on to you. Will you please join me and face the final golden wall? <laughs> Here we go, my love. Light up all ten columns within the time, and you and your team will be leaving with £8,640. Let's put two minutes on the clock. That time will start when I finish reading the first question. Good luck, Carol. Generation. Jack Kerouac was a leading figure in which so-called generation? Uh, the 60s beatnik generation. I can accept. Kerry, the westernmost point of mainland Ireland lies on which peninsula in County Kerry? Uh, Shannon Peninsula. No, Dingle. Who was Barack Obama's Secretary of State immediately before John Kerry? Hillary Clinton. Correct. National Anthem. The French National Anthem is featured along with the Russian one in whose 1812 overture? Tchaikovsky. Correct. Candle. Bell, book and candle refers to a method in the Roman Catholic Church for doing what? Exorcism. No. Excommunication. Which organisation has a candle in barbed wire as its logo? Amnesty International. Correct. International. Chain. Which 2000 Coen Brothers film features an escape from a chain gang? Oh, brother, where are they? Correct. Victoria, on which African river are the Victoria Falls? Zambezi. Correct. 
submarine. Which Spanish football club has the nickname El Submarino Amarillo or the Yellow Submarine? Oh, Seville? No, Villarreal. The Hunt for Red October is a novel about a Soviet submarine by which author? Oh, God. Um... Oh, John Ryan. No, Tom Clancy. What name is shared by a type of fish with a flattened body and by a submarine in a TV series featuring puppets? Flatfish. Death. Stop the clock. Oh, the answer I was looking for there was Stingray. <sighs> right, Carol, great job. We've still got 40 seconds on the clock, but the clock has been stopped. The money has been decimated. Will you please step down and return to your team? Right, team, we now have to rebuild the wall. We are now down to £7,776. Still a lot of money. We need a new keyword, and the keyword is Eden. Chloe and Alcamel, one of you must now step up and try and complete the journey across the wall. Who's it going to be? I think you're, you're okay, I'll try my best. Go on. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Okay. Alcamel, please step forward and face the golden wall. As I said, we're now playing for £7,776. We have 40 seconds left. The clock will restart when I finish asking this question. Good luck, my friend. Eden. The footballer, Eden Azar, plays for which country? Belgium. Correct. Trials. Mark Todd, four-time winner of the Badminton Horse Trials, is from which Commonwealth country? Canada. No, New Zealand. The Salem Witch Trials of 1692 provide the basis for which Arthur Miller play? I don't know. Pass. The Crucible. In which German city were a series of trials held in 1945 and 1946 of Nazi accused of war crimes? Nuremberg. Correct. Easter. Easter Island, famous for its stone heads, belongs to which country? Australia. Chile. Which 2011 film featured the voice of Russell Brand as E.B., the son of the Easter Bunny? Oh, um, oh, pass. Yes. Oh, mate. No. <sighs> I'm afraid we've run out of time. The answer I was looking for at the end was the film Hop. Oh. I'm so sorry, my friend, and you've had such a great game. I'm afraid yeah. you didn't make it across the wall, which means, I'm afraid, team, you're going to be leaving with nothing. But give them a big round of applause. Come here, buddy. Come here, guys. I'm genuinely glad for you. Listen, guys, honestly, you should be really proud of yourself, because as a team, you were brilliant. <laughs> um, you did, and you had a lot of fun. We've had fun. Yeah. Had a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. We all got to meet each other. Join me next time to see whether another team of complete strangers can take home a huge cash prize, or whether, like this team here, they'll be decimated. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.